chapter of Esther, the Bible says that when Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, he was filled with rage. And then we jump over here to verse 8, and it says that Haman approached the king Xerxes and said, there is a certain race of people scattered through all the provinces of your empire who keep themselves separate from everyone else. Their laws are different from those of any other people, and they refuse to obey the laws of the king. So it is not in the king's interest to let them live. If it please the king, issue a decree that they be destroyed, and I will give 10,000 large sacks of silver to the government <laughs> to be deposited in the royal treasury. The king agreed, confirming his decision by removing his signet ring from his finger and giving it to Haman, son of Hamadatha the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews. The king said, the money and the people are both yours to do with as you see fit. So they dressed up Haman's decree in righteousness through the signet ring. They made it appear that this was an acceptable thing to wipe the Jews off the face of the earth. They dressed it up with a signet ring and said, this is okay. But we know that Hangman got hung on the gallows, right? But where did that spirit of rage go that was driving Haman? Where did that spirit land? Was it in Sir Francis Galton and Charles Darwin who wanted to preserve the favored races? So they started a pseudoscience called eugenics because they said we have to control the birth rate of those that we don't want too many of, like Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said in 2009 that was the impetus behind Roe v. Wade. And they found willing partners in the Carnegies and the Rockefellers and the other elite, like Margaret Sanger, who started her Negro project in 1939, where she paid black ministers and black leaders to teach and preach birth control from the pulpit. She found willing partners like W.E.B. Du Bois and many other black leaders to promote their message should it occur to any of our more rebellious members that they wanted to exterminate us. That's what she said to Dr. C.J. Gamble in 1939. But let's fast forward to 1973 when Roe v. Wade was decided, and Roe v. Wade said, yes, you can kill a child in the womb in this great nation of America. And they dressed up men and women like Alan Guttmacher and others to, and sent them into the black community. Vanessa Cullen, who gets $250,000 to proclaim to the black community that it is okay for us to kill our babies. Like Carlton Vesey, the president of the religious clergy for reproductive choice, who gets 200 plus thousand dollars to tell us that it is okay to kill our babies. And don't get me started on the Black Congressional Caucus and Gwen Moore, who said when we were trying to defund Planned Parenthood that somehow Planned Parenthood was going to help her, that he, she was going to help her to do I don't know what, except perhaps kill one of her three children. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying to you today that that spirit of Haman was released in the earth to control the birth rate of the black community through abortion. And it is succeeding. It is succeeding in New York City today for every 
1,000 black babies that were born alive, 1,489 are reported. It is succeeding in Georgia where I live, where 59% of the abortions are on black women. And let me just tell you that that's not just this year. In New York City, for the past 11 years, they have been aborting more of their babies than born alive. In the state of Georgia, for the last 15 years, the numbers have been at 60%. But they want us to believe it's because we have more unintended pregnancies. That is a lie straight from the pit. The lion's share of Planned Parenthood's clinics are in the urban areas where we reside. They have placed their clinics there to draw the black woman in. But we stand here today and we say no more. We stand here today and I say what Esther said. If I have found favor with the king and if it, if it pleases the king to grant my request, I ask for my life and the lives of my people will be spared. We stand today to the only true king, the only wise God, our Father. And we say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Let us live, Lord. Draw us unto you, my Father. Bring us back to you, my Lord. Bring us to your bosom, my God, that we might live and not die. talked about was written by Margaret Sanger to one of the Gambles was one of the heirs of Procter and Gamble December 10th 1939 it said about their Negro project we don't want word to get out that we want to annihilate the Negro race therefore we must get ministers black ministers involved in this project so they can disquiet some of the more rebellious members should they find this thing out well it's too late I found it out Arnold Colbert has found it out. Dean Nelson has found it out. Let's pray right now for the scales to fall off the black clergy right now in the name of Jesus. God, raise up right now. Raise up a rebellion and a revolt against Planned Parenthood and its money. We don't want your money. We want our babies. We don't need your influence. We want the next generation. Raise up leaders after your own heart, God. Shift the influence. Raise up people who call abortion what it is. It's murder. It's death. Break bills influence in the black church in Jesus' name. And raise up your voice, God. Raise up a 